got the screen off. Uh, you know, it's uh, August 6th, <laughs> and it is Tuesday. This is really kind of like the first start of the week. All right, we got a couple of guys joined in. We make uh, Nick the co-host. All right. So the first thing we're going to do on this call is we're actually going to go through, um, let me share my screen, and we're going to go through just uh, where we're at right now. You know, last night uh, I created a video of kind of like my nightly uh, kind of just check uh, the things that I check uh, before before I go to sleep, you know, and, and the reason why is to uh, pretty much do a um, pretty much do a um, a timestamp moment. So what I mean by timestamp moment is basically track where we're at. So when I wake up in the morning, you know, I can actually have a history of what happened in the seven hours or eight hours that I was asleep, you know, and um, so I'm gonna go over some of. So, you know, right now on the calendar, you know, it says um, August 6th, you know, his historically August is uh, the worst month for the stock market. Uh, yesterday, uh, last night, you know, I seen the actual futures market moving up uh, right after four o'clock. So that means the money was coming in right after the stock market, right after retail close, you know, and around one o'clock, three o'clock, you know, retail, the market is unavailable for most regular traders. And then what I do is I watch the futures and I see that futures start moving up. And so you see here at six, uh, four o'clock PM, you see that it started moving up, all right? And that, that told me that, you know, it's gonna be a positive day in the stock market. You know, technically Wall Street rebounds at the worst day. And then last night I created a video saying that, um, you know, and I put it in Facebook, a webinar saying that, you know, I had noticed this that, you know, hey, the, the futures market uh, was starting to move. I want to make sure uh, no, nothing is in the chat. Um, and so, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, you guys caught on to that, like, tip or watched the video. Um, you know, that is one of the things that everybody can see my screen, right? So, so I want to make sure. <laughs> All right, cool. So, you know, that, that's one of the things we noticed. And, and basically, I, I posted last night that, hey, if, if the uh, future's moving up after a, a super down day in the, uh, stock, in the stock market and futures are moving, pretty much the next day is going to be a uh, high day. That means the guys got in here, they got in early, you know, which is the institutions, the banks, the professional traders. And then when the market opened up this morning, I mean, of course, what do they do? They're going to sell for retail. Um, now, if we look at the crypto market, you know, we're hitting, you know, uh, recovering. And the same thing, you know, we basically had up. And at some point, they're going to take profits. And that profit taking, um, you know, was basically taking money out of uh, crypto and professionals. And then some of the retail was like, oh man, the stock market is uh, moving up. Then they go get in and then it kind of, it's kind of going to switch again. And so the stock market, the retail, the uh, institutions, they may take profits um, on the on the stock market at close. And then you'll start seeing, we'll be watching this, tracking the crypto markets to see, you know, kind of where, where they stop at. And basically it could be one more little dump at the end of the day, um, you know, when the, when the market's close. Um, and then you'll see, you may see a recovery. So uh, that's that's kind of that, you know, just a short-term a short-term move, a trend up and down. And then you know, basically, I go through um, a regular check. So looking at the market, you know, it went up to twelve two yesterday. Uh, it's down five hundred. You know, that's kind of the mark. Hey, whoever's uh, you know. Whoever's on, they just came on. Can you, can you go on mute if uh, we can hear all kind of movement? And so right now, what you look at is I look at the volume, you know, and I see that USCT, Pox, you know, uh, 
TUSD and what stands out is BCH. You know, BCH is, you know, still green amongst these. Litecoin happening was, you know, supposed to happen uh, today or, you know, possibly another week. Uh, if it didn't happen already, I haven't uh, checked on that. But you can see that it's red. And yesterday I, I caught it just for a day trade and it was like an hour, two hour trade. It went from 95 to 98 or 99 and was able to sell at 98. And so that, you know, those are small trades. Now, um, you know, I think for, um, you know, a lot of guys, even in the mastermind report, we had, we had a report and it, it, it means that these are the coins that we're looking at, but we haven't, we haven't had a, um, a buy signal on coins. You know, those are our first choice. That's the ones we're going to track. All right. Hey, if you guys can, I don't know who's not on mute. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, on the six, if we look at our report, you know, the, the sixth and the seventh uh, and the fifth was really, you know, observation periods because, uh, you know, we couldn't determine how it was going to be. Um, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't determine if it was going to be up or down, but considering that Sunday was a, um, you know, a positive day, you know, we was going to have stops in or, you know, some kind of way to take profits. And that's why last night I was actually like, hey, you know, you know, put your stops in or, uh, you know, if you're going to get in, it's only going to be a day trade. Day trade means in and out. You know, you take any small profit that, you know, you can get, you just want to lose on those day trades. And, okay, so on the six is observation. You know, we're watching volume. So we had volume last night, and we kind of documented it at 312. Now it's 6 billion, 6 billion out. And this is and now the Bitcoin dominance is still going up. So that means that funds are still coming on all coins. You know, even though they're going into Bitcoin, a lot of the all coins are still going down. And so when guys are talking about the all, all coin season, all season, you know, when we were watching the numbers, if we just, you know, keep us timestamp, we'll see that no matter what someone is saying, and the all coins are still funds are still coming out and still going into Bitcoin because we've had a large increase in market cap, which 305 was our number, uh, you know, but the all coin still isn't getting this much uh, activity, you know, that they're being day traded in and out, you know, so uh, that's, you know, that is what we notice uh, for the week. And that's what we keep, you know, as a, as a guide. So when I say it starts with volume and we have our checklist um, that, you know, really we need to go, you have to go through them. I mean, like the, the checklist and the, um, you know, asking yourself certain questions, you know, the, the, um, the trading journal, you know, that's all for you, for you to basically manage uh, the trades. You know, a lot of, t a lot of, a lot of folks are, you know, jumping into altcoins or are kind of being impatient uh, with the market. and you know, the, the obje objective is to make a good trade. You know, it's not even to get profitable. You know, it's just basically a good trade. It's just a good trade after good trade. You know, Litecoin from 95 or 96 to 98 in a, in a short amount of time is just a good trade. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going you're gonna to catch all the good trades. It, it's just a good trade after good trade is what you're looking for. You know, and so you want to go through that uh, checklist. You know, this checklist is here to kind of, you know, slow you down. You know, the overtrading is um, something that, you know, with, with the tools that we have and, and guys want to try the tools and jump into them, you know, without going through a regular checklist. So the automated trading, the, the margins, um, you know, you still have to have a process and it shouldn't change whether you're doing automated trading, day trading, swing trading. You still want to go through a certain checklist. And so, you know, the, coin, the current total coin market cap at the moment. You know how I look at this is basically I want to check the current total market cap. If it's, you know, I know last night it was 312. If it's 306 right now and it's not um, dropping, I want to notice that. And I'm like, all right, I'll write it down. The current total coin market cap at the moment is 306. But then I'm going to put last night it was 312. You know, that's a note to myself. What was the coin market uh, one day ago? And what was it one hour ago? So in one hour, I'm going to check um, and see if it was up or down. And so you can actually go here to TradingView. 
you type in total, it gives you the total. And even if it's wrong or right, I mean, you know, even if it's um, not 100% accurate, but you can tell that every 20 of these candlesticks is one hour. So I'm looking at the one hour chart. So one hour ago, I can see it was still higher. Even though it's not the same number that I'm looking at coin market cap, this open and close, these are open and close wicks. One was higher than this one is now, All right? And then I see where the support level is right here. So, you know, this is about 5 billion off uh, from coin market cap. And I just know that from experience. So really at 300 billion on this chart, you know, and you're looking at all information, you know, you're not taking one, one thing, you're not looking at the screener and just using the screener by itself. You know, you want to go through a certain checklist so you'll know exactly, you know, the more information you have, the better prepared you are on any trade, whether it's day trade, hour trade. The current market sentiment, you know, so I'll use a tie, I'll use a tool. So instead of, you know, that that's a manual way to do it, you know, on the total market cap, right? This is manual. I'm going to a chart, I'm actually looking at it myself. And then I'll go to a tool and I'll see, you know, what is the market sentiment? I see this is a uh, negative, you know, it's not a positive number. So that means that it's going down there. You know, 24 hour change is a little bit negative. Uh, I've also, you know, first thing, one of the first things I do is look at Wall Street and see where it's at. And so, you know, that increase, you know, just it shows me about money flow and then the commodities. Uh, the gold, it shows me if, you know, people are still um, scared, right? And gold is still up, even though the Wall Street is up. So that's a clue that, you know, if gold is still up and they haven't dumped it off, that means people are still nervous. <laughs> you know, so, it's, uh, you know, so at the end of the stock market, I mean, in, in the day-to-day, -day, I would expect they're going to take profits because, you know, um, and then I'm going to come and says, all right, that's the current market sentiment. So right now I got negative, 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 right? Uh, coins are trending. I'm going to look here and I'm just going to, you know, do a spot test. I'm looking for, is there a lot of green or is there a lot of red? So if I look at the one hour, all right, so I can go down, everything is red on a one hour column. If I go on the one hour, there's not anything solid green. Uh, you know, these two, one and Matic is both. So it tells me these are only two trending coins that are probably most likely on Binance right away. So right away, I know what coins are trending. Uh, SE, uh, CELR, Matic, and One, which is, you know, really that they're highly manipulated on Binance. So that doesn't, that's not, a, I'm not going to force these trades to be the trades I look at. There's no way that I'm going to say, all right, out of the whole entire market, you know, I'm going to, you know, this gives me a green sign to go ahead and buy. So today, it's still bearish. And this is me going through it slowly. You know, what is the overall trend? Bearish or bullish? Well, then I'll look at, you know, I'll look at the alligator. Now I'll look at BTC. I know BTC on the uh, market, you know, that's trending up. So look at the one day. So I'm looking at it for the day. And I see that's trending up. And then I'll see it hit a resistance. Because I'm looking at the left of the chart. So it's in the resistance, but it is trending up. And, you know, so this, it tells me that, all right, it's trending up, but it's hitting resistance. Everything else is negative. So overall trend is, is bullish. And so I just have to wait for my time. What has been the lower to high for that particular coin in the last seven days? So if we're looking at any coin, you know, let's just use NEO. Uh, so if you're like, all right, I'm, I'm getting in the market, I'm going to buy all. Right now, I would not buy all considering that the BTC dominance is going up. So that eliminates that, right? But if I was going to look at an alt, and I says, all right, well, what is the seven-day history? If you're picking some coin, it's, I call it a random. If you're picking a random, you know, you want to go through the checklist and look at the last seven days. So I go here and I go through historical data. And I'm going over this because, you know, this is, um, you know, if guys are going to take trades on their own or, you know, not wait for a signal, you know, at least go through the checklist of why you buying. So the last seven days, I see a low, 1103, 1126, right? So if I see that low, I look at the close here, the lowest close was 1125, you know, I would be willing to buy, you know, NEO under 1126. You know, it's not the total low, 
but it, it gets you in this area where, you know, you're high in average. The open has never opened lower than 1126 over here. So if I can get it under 1126, you know, in one of these days, and I'll look at the price right now, it's 1164. So, you know, if you're gonna buy all, you should buy that, you know, lower than the second lowest day, right? So now I can put an order somewhere down here, 1126 or 1121, you know, and then I can just walk away from it. You know, and that's being patient. You know, it's not saying, hey, I'm gonna force a trade right now. I'm gonna get in 1165 because it's, it's low. It's like, you know, no, I'm gonna wait for it at 1126. And if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. You miss it, you miss it. But at least you don't get into it at, you know, you're showing discipline. All right, so, you know, that's a low and high, right? Is it under a seven day MA or above it? Right now it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of right here on the line. So that's 50-50, it doesn't, it doesn't give you uh, that clarity. Uh, candlestick, all right, so we're ready to check the total market cap. Long interest on coin form, so we want to see if a hey, shorts are are they are they you know hanging on or our longs are getting in into the market. Right now, you know if it's no clear indication, it's fifty fifty. So the inner right now, you know anything is still fifty fifty. Like no one, you know we're right here on the support level for BTC. Uh, all coins, you know if BTC goes down more, all to all coins are going to go down more. So you don't want to play it where it's right, right here. We're right on a level. You know, there's a candlestick. It's been holding 11.703. You know, and I'll just watch this, you know, and I'll watch and I'll actually go down to a different time frame, maybe 15 minutes an hour, just to see what it's doing, you know, in this immediate time. So maybe I'll wait another hour and see if it goes above it. But for right now, it's under. You know, if you look at 15 minutes, you can see if it's getting some momentum and it's still under it. So all time frames is under the seven day M&A, which is uh, not, not a sign to enter. Then even if it, you know, went over, if you're looking at the one hour, it's like, I still might not even get it here because it's still on a resistance level. And, you know, not until it passed 1190 is it back on a kind of uptrend. And so some guys, you know, want to take the chance right now uh, just because it's Tuesday morning, they feel like they have to trade. Sometimes it's not a trade. So now if I go to the VU and then check it on a one hour, this is, this is you know, if you can't go through this uh, process, that means that you're rushing it. It means that you are in a panic and you're gonna make a decision because you're in a day trading mindset and you're in a impatient. Like, you know, if, it, if you can't, go through that check and it normally takes me 10 minutes to go through the things I'm, I'm telling you guys, you know, five or 10 minutes, uh, right here, I see, you know, more buyers than sellers. And then down here, I see if it drops under 1170, uh, 11,700 bounces down between 16, uh, 11,650, then I can see that it can actually go, you know, down a little bit faster. So then I go to one hour. In one hour, I see this long tail wick. I see, I look at, I track even the candlesticks. I want to see, you know, is that manipulation? But you see these big reds. Then you see here, you have some buyers around here. So this buyer is telling me that if it drops under 11, 11, 11,650, you know, it, it may take a, a bigger dump because you see that 331 sellers, 231 sellers, 198. It's showing me that, you know, there's more sellers than buyers if it drops under here. And so, you know, if it doesn't stay above here, so if you entered here at, at 11,650, you'll be out. And that's for the people that want to, you know, that want to, you know, get in and, and, you know, if you have a convention or if you don't have a convention, no, you're not going to be watching, you know, that's when you just stay away and wait till you get a better move and then it's just a short trade. And then, you know, if, it, if you missed a move, it's like, all right, well, you missed a move because if it drops, you're going to be down further. Uh, you know, and then you, you're going to be down here. You don't know how far it's going to go down. It is long tail wick. You know, it went down to 11,560. So if you had to pick a place to get in, you know, this probably would be a better place to get in. You know, and that's just, you know, that's just showing what's going to happen at the end of the market. 
And so that's kind of what, you know, I would wait for is Tuesday at the end of the stock market, end of, you know, give another session. So determine where your stop should be before you enter. So right away, I identified, you know, 11,650. That's where my stop is going to be. And then what is your loan? Like, all right, so, you know, where am I looking to sell? So I would look at the day. I said, all right, the, the last previous high was here, 12, 12, three. Uh, is there any buyers anywhere? And so I might say 12,000, you know, just, or 11, 11,930, 9, you know, and then if it goes higher, it goes higher, but at least you have a plan of where you know your stop and where, you, where your sell is at. So where's your stop, where's your loan? So uh, going through that, all right, so let's go through the rest of the week now real quick, and I'll, I'll stay on after, because I want to go through stop losses uh, using them correctly. Because, because you see right here on a one hour, you see these are, these are designed to go down and get your stops. These are stop loss well, honey. And and so, you know, using stops, if you're getting in right here at eleven seven, you know, it's better to get in down here and have a buy order. You know, so if you sit, if you stop out at eleven six five, then it's better to have a buy order down here, you know, at the at the longest wick where you at. And then you would also have um another stop loss that you put down here under that or you just wait you know you wait you just be patient and come down to somewhere like eleven thousand you know and yeah you you can miss the run uh but if you, you know it requires time you know there's no shortcuts because you don't know what the market is going to do in advance <laughs> you know uh, some some of this is you have to wait and see you have to wait and see these candlesticks this was a strong candlestick you know from from ten nine you know all the way to 11.8. And so now we have to see if it's going to break down. You know, if you want to break the hour, you know, you want to break the day into four hour periods to certain to where we trade, you see these candlesticks look different. So in the last four hours, we've had a lot of sales and we haven't, you know, got back over 11.8. And this would, you know, 11.8 is basically above this candlestick here. Okay. So. All right, so back to the market and back to the mastermind report. So the coins that we have here, you know, these are coins that we're looking at because you, you have to have a watch list. You can't watch the whole 2,000 um, tokens. I mean, you can't watch all the entire market, you know. So you, you want to come here and you want to add the symbols that we have in the, um, you know, in the mastermind report to basically put those coins in as a, as a watch. So let me see where you're at. Sorry, I'm just going through this. So th these are notes uh, on the days. The swing periods, you know, August 12th through the 16th would be an, another good time to, you know, look at the uh, swing periods. But I'm sorry, I'm going through this real fast. So for me, I normally have this printed out on my desk. Uh, I don't refer to the elect elect uh, electronic version often. Don't forget you got your bookmarks over there too. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. So, I mean, we had the uh, stuff on scalping. You know, there there's strategies to it all, and, and even with these stop losses. So I'll actually uh, touch on that as well. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm going through the... Uh, All right, I can't find it. All right, let me grab my piece of, I have a piece of paper. So like, you know, the, the coins that we had, you want to use the trading view and you want to tr use the stop loss, uh, you know, for that. I mean, you want to use the, uh, the watch list. You know, you put the coins in that you're watching right here. 
in this way on a day you can see which, which one of these are greens which one are they moving and you know you want to see where it's at before you buy it just because it's, it's green don't mean you jump in because you may have missed you may have missed it so uh meaning that you know you don't want to jump in a high you, you wanted to catch it earlier so i, I got it now and it, it was a uh, it was after that page. <laughs> right here. <laughs> so these coins will be in your watch list. These coins will be in your watch list. All these coins, if you had to you know, pick the coins, they will all be here in the watch list. And so, you know, as simple as just coming here, and adding the, the one that you want to watch. You know, normally I'll watch uh, Teether, and then you know you, you can also eliminate them. <laughs> you can eliminate the ones you don't want to you don't want to see. And so you know this is this is one way you're going to use the, um, you know, and then you just put them put them here. And so at any time you can see, you'll see you'll be tracking them. You'll you'll know where they're at. So if I'm not around, you know you'll know exactly because every time you look at Trading View they'll be posted right here. And then, you know, and then you can actually see one of the one of ones and see, all right, if the news are moving or not. You know, like, why, why is it green? So, you know, I actually put the alerts on the actual charts, you know, for me, but I mean, here, this is an exercise of, of you know, putting them in your watch list and having them laid out. And then you have, know what you want you want on our you know our chart or not all right all right so if you're day trading you know i had I had a guy ask you know ask me um i think it was a shadow it's like hey are you using did you get stopped out and so if i'm day trading in front of my screen i'll say that, you know the stop limited you know i think resistance at 1140 or you know 11400 but it doesn't mean that I go put a stop in because I'm watching it. I'm in front of it. So I'm day trading. So I'm I'm free to look at the charts and change my mind because I'm in front of the computer. You know, so if I'm, you know, if I had a target because I'm going through my checklist and I'm actually going through and says, hey, you know, where's my stop? Where's my long? So I'm telling you guys, hey, my stop would be here. But if all of a sudden I see the candle, you know, candle is moving up and it moves up in a powerful way, then I may move my stop up as well, and I may follow it. So I'm going to change it. So you know it's based on your availability. If you're not available to you know watch the market, or you know you're not available to actually uh, go through that checklist, then you want to protect it and just make a good trade. You know, and you're gonna miss you're gonna miss out because you're not gonna get the perfect top or the bottom. You could be in front of your screen and you're not gonna get the perfect top or bottom. Because even if you think it's on 11, 11, 8, you know, 11,800, what happened if it goes to 11,795? You know, you have to determine, like, hey, you know what? It's close enough. It's $5. I'm going to sell it because I know that I'm going to be gone. And I, I wrote it from 11.4 to 11.9. You know, it's like you determine that. You know, now if you're not watching and it doesn't hit your stop, then it's like the stop is really advertisements for the institutions. They know they can see your stops. So if they see everyone stops at the same spot, you know, it's better to have it a little bit less, you know, and, and that's where, um, you know, when Nick, he had posted out like, hey, I think it's going to hit, you know, 11,638, you know, it was $30 off because it wants to be a level that everyone else could see as well. And so the institutions aren't going to run into exactly where it is. They may sell a little bit early. So there's a $50, $100 you know, variants that, hey, you know what, I'm not going to wait and see if they continue to go. Maybe I take it early and, I, and I'm happy with that. You know, you have to determine, like, you know, that's the greed and that's the, uh, you know, ability to say, hey, you know what, I'll take it a little bit early. You know, it's, it's something that I sold, you know, Bitcoin at 11.8. It ran up to 12, you know, 12,000 and people were like, where are we in? I was like, you know, I'm just going to day trade. I'll day trade Litecoin real fast. But, you know, I seen the market. I seen the futures going up, and you know I wanted to go to sleep, and I wanted to be able to sleep, you know, sound knowing today. You know, if I'm if I'm out the market, I'm out, but I can get back in tomorrow, 
at least I'll be rested so I can make a good decision tomorrow. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay up and sacrifice sleep and then be tired the next day and then my trading is bad the next day as well. Because then it starts running running into one day after the next. So, you know, if you make bad mistakes one day and then you stay up stressing them hard, you know, that night, then the next day what it, you you basically just created a cycle for yourself. Now the next day you're not gonna be as alert. You you're already jitters, you stayed up worrying last night, and now you come into the next day with the same negative energy and you're more tired and you're more stressed out. So, you know, the mental aspect of the trading is, you know, if you take a loss or, you know, you have a business expense, you know, the next thing is like, hey, I just want to make a good trade, you know, and then it's, it becomes a habit. I just want to make a good trade. I just want to get in, take a small profit and get back out because then that, that helps your mentality, your sight of now it's like, all right, well, yeah, I had a bad trade, but I have had five good ones. You know, I've had five good ones after that bad trade. So uh, let me continue to do what I'm doing. You know, if you have a bad trade and then you don't assess it and then you have another bad trade, then you don't assess it, then you have another bad trade, then it's like you're not changing anything. And the checklist helps you stay focused. So that's the discipline and the patience that, you know, that creates your process. So, you know, if you follow the process, you know, you'll, you'll have – a a result that you know looks similar to past results all right let me see where my screen is at so um yeah if you guys want to shoot in questions on that uh over stop loss let's let's go over um the stop loss now if we're looking at here at bitcoin all right the obvious stop loss is 11.5 right 11.5 here, because this is a 50-day M&A, 11.542. And so if you're going to put a stop in, most people are going to see this moving average. And you go down, and you're going to look at one day, one hour. I see one here, uh, 10,900, uh, 10,570. And then what I'm doing is looking at these candlesticks to the left to see where I'm at, you know, 11,004. So... You see, these are key resistance, 11,004, you know, if you had to put a stop loss, it would be somewhere in between here, <laughs> like, you know, 10.7, because you, you know, you don't want to put it, it's an advertisement for where the other orders are. So if you go to Tensor Chart, you know, Tensor Chart is a tool that you can use, um, or a TC, uh, tool you can use to see where the orders are, because you'll see a bunch of numbers at certain levels. So if I change this to the uh, one day, you know, even using a free plan, not anything. So if I come down here, uh, something doesn't look right. All right, so I'm looking at these numbers here. These are orders. So you see you have a bunch of orders at 11.4, 11.3. So these are advertisements for institutions. You got a lot of buyers here between 11.4 and 11, 11,390. So your stop loss should probably be $50 away from this number because these are buy. So, you know, maybe it, it hits that and then it pushes even down further to get these guys to buy and then push them down a little bit lower, you know, or it's going to be a wall here. So maybe, you know, maybe it dips down, but you don't want to have your stop loss exactly where everybody's at. Your stop loss has to be in a number where it's not advertised. So if you're going to buy, you know, maybe, maybe you don't buy at 11.4, maybe you buy at 11, 11, you know, 420. You know, somewhere where it's it's not as thick, it drops past eleven four fifty, maybe it gets eleven four twenty, eleven four ten, but it doesn't go down here because they know there's a bunch of buys there as well. And so if they can push it back up real fast, it snaps down and get it, and then comes back up. They're gonna make these guys chase. They make these guys chase the market back up. Cause they're gonna be like, damn, I had my stop loss, it didn't hit. So now they they're getting back in around here or around here. So, you know, a lot of times these orders, they're not on the, they're not on the order book. They're going to make the decision. They're going to have alerts and they're going to get in 
or they're going to hide their order. Institutions aren't putting their, you know, big orders right here unless it's, it's on purpose. You know, they're not putting it here unless it's on purpose. All right. And so even the sale orders, you look up here and you look at where the orders are, you know. Oops. Need to get it back. <laughs> Sorry, let me uh, get it back, get the order book back up. <laughs> All right, so, you know, you, you see here, you see the order's at 12,000. That's, a, you know, uh, 1183. And then you look at, you know, where's the majority of the order's at? So there's a resistance level here, 11,830. And then you can go up more. And so really, if it passed 11,830, 11,9, then, you know, there's not a lot of resistance, a lot of, not a lot of huge orders. This order keeps going up and down. And then, you know, we're going to track the coin, coin form. So with your stops, you don't want to use them in the middle of the day. Um, you know, the stops will protect you at night. You know when you when you're not watching at all, but then you also want to give it a, a get enough room where it's like if it hits, you know like stop couldn't be right here. That's where everybody else is stop. The stop has to be somewhere down here. You know where it, it's not gonna it, it doesn't have a past history. So if you if you're gonna buy around 9400, you know it says where are you gonna put your stop? You gotta put your stop down like 89, somewhere where it hasn't hit before. You know, and that's that's to give yourself enough room, you know, to they either come down and get yours by itself or they or they're getting the institutions are all the retail. You know, it's almost when you use stops, it's almost better to be a lone wolf. <laughs> you know, it's better to be an in, individual on the stop side. You know, on the trading side, the buying side, it's better to be, you know, running with the pack, running with the trends. So, um, you know that's how that goes. Hey, we have any uh anybody wants to ask any questions right now? Is there a major difference uh between trading on Binance and Bifinex? Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a big difference. Bifinex has a uh, different amount of volume. So let me um let me go to big big G U R. Where where is that? So if you go here to exchanges on Bit Bigger, you can see the volume on the different exchanges, right? So for one, the volume and what tool, what what those exchanges offer. So if you look at uh, Bitrix, Bitfinex is here at 325 million, and you see uh, there's volume coming in, and then uh, where is Bitrix? Bitches here is 58 million. So there's three, uh, what, six times more, about five times more volume on Bifinex. And the thing with Bifinex is, if you go to the exchange, what, to, what do they offer that's different than Bitrix? They offer, I'm pretty sure they offer uh, margin, right? Margin funding, margin training, so it allows uh, three time leverage and um, you know it's not it's not as regulated and I think it's not available to US customers. You know, it's it's available, but I don't think it's available. <laughs> right. And so you're still trading on Binance, which you know, Binance is the exchange that we don't know what's gonna happen. So a lot of people have, you know, started moving off of of Binance. Uh, just because it's like, you know, if, if they've, they've given us a warning that they're not going to be available to U.S. customers and we're still waiting for that exchange for U.S. customers to come on. But in the meantime, you know, people are, people are not going to wait. You shouldn't be waiting to the, the very last end of the day to move. You know, it's like you don't know what's going to happen. So you don't want, you know, you want to start planning to move it to at least be safe. 
you know, some of some of the guys still have it on Exodus, and they have control over it because they're keeping it off the exchanges. And I have a couple of guys that are doing swing trades. Uh, like, for instance, James, he asked last night, like, hey, where I'm going to move into stablecoin? He's keeping it off Exodus. You know, he runs a construction company. He's working, like, 10, 12 hours a day. Like, you know, if some news comes out in the middle of the day, he knows that he's not able to react to it as fast. So his, you know, uh, strategy is to be be safer and just, all right, well, I'll, I'll take a – I won't be able to be as flexible, but I'll at least be safe and I have control over my crypto. So it, now it comes down to the individual, you know, determining their risk level. So Amos, I mean, that's that's – that's something, you know, yeah, I mean, you have until September, they, they said. But if something changes or, you know, if they, they freeze the, you know, free, freeze the assets, you know, I don't know if they're going to do it or not. You know, I don't know when when exactly is going to happen. So for me, I have, I, I'm going to have testings. Most of my coins are held in Exodus. They're held though because they're, they're long term. And, you know, I'm not really moving out of uh, Bitcoin. I'm testing, you know, Binance. I'm testing Bitrix. I'm testing. I was testing Kraken. I was taking uh, on KuCoin. I had them spread out, and I had like a couple thousand on each exchange. So, you know, that that was something that I was doing. But I'm also testing the robot on two or three of those exchanges. And so I wasn't trading, you know, with a large amount, like over a hundred thousand, trading with twenty grand or you know three thousand exchange, four thousand exchange, and four or five different exchanges. So it's spread out right now. And that's why also, you know, the uh, some of the day trading has been on Coinbase or Pro, Pro Coinbase because I have funds there as well. Um, so, you know, if if you guys need help with your account, you know, at, you know, ask me the questions uh, for your account. So, you know, because everyone is going to have a different scenario. You know, like everybody's not construction workers like James that maybe only check his account once every couple of days. You know. And he doesn't move it until he gets home. So even if the market was going down right now, uh, yeah, there's 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 large differences uh, in prices. So you know, some of these some of these questions. I mean, you know, you you go look if you know depending on a coin, you you go to the coin market cap, and you look at the coin that you're looking at about the different exchanges. Like if you're looking at Bitcoin, yeah, I mean you can see the price difference. You can see the price difference between the exchanges. Sometimes it's, it's it, sometimes it varies as wide, sometimes it's short. So there's a difference day to day, second to second. It's an open exchange, so you know it's not you know like for instance, Bitrix and Binance have different prices. Bitrix is normally lower. So if I go down here and I find Bitrix. Bitrix is normally lower. Coinbase is normally higher. Um, and you, you have to just look at the one specifically. So Bitrix right now is, uh, you know, 11740 Binance is 11760 That's a $20 difference. All right. Uh, any more questions coming in, coming in? No, no more questions. <laughs> Come on, I get a lot of messages. All right, so uh, you know, right now, um, you know, for for the day, I'm waiting until after one to kind of really uh, get in. No, nah, most likely, we'll, I mean, you can you can move to, you know, the change you want. I'm on Bitrix right now, and then you know, also like KuCoin, but. Um, you know, I'm actually looking at. I want to. I want to know where the institutions are moving, right? The institutions that are available in the U.S. And so there's new exchanges that are, you know, starting to, um, you know, come up. And that, you know, I'm hoping for. Right now, I'm keeping most majority of my stuff is on Exodus and in swing trading. Uh, and you know, if if I went to Kraken and I just didn't like the numbers, the Europe stuff, you know, and so. I didn't feel comfortable, but other guys 
can move. Yeah, I mean, arbitrage is something you can look at. Um, you know, for me, I mean, I know that guys are using, um, you know, some people got into that cloud wallet thing. And for me, I just, I've seen a lot. I've seen scams and I haven't, I haven't seen them all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, for me, it's like I'm really cautious with getting involved in uh, even arbitrage because you send them back and forth. And sometimes the wallet comes unavailable and it just, it, it takes a lot of, um, if you're doing it manually, it takes a lot of your time. Yeah, the largest U.S. exchange would be the best for us. Yeah, I mean, the most volume. Yeah, I mean, because we, we trade off volume. So, you know, to ask the question of arbitrage, you know, that's something you can do, but I, I don't really focus on that. I just, you know, say focus on the trading, you know, the swing trading, day trading, and try to make the good trades. If you throw arbitrage in, you have some guys throwing mining in, you know, they're they're distracted and they're in different things. And, you know, you can't move your funds as fast. Then when it comes to arbitrage, now you have multiple exchanges reporting your numbers, you know, back to, you know, the U.S. government as well. So the more you, the more you play on different exchanges, the more you can get hacked, the more you're moving from one wallet to the next. Um, you know, that's, that's not something I'm, I'm into. But, you know, if you ask me a recommendation, <laughs> you can look at it, but I, I'm not doing it. You know, I'm staying off a of hit BTC. Uh, some of these exchanges, you know, they, they come up with issues. You know, you have more issues, you have more exchanges than you do have coins. I mean, almost like you have, it was at one point you had more markets than you had cryptocurrencies on, on coin market cap. You see, you have uh, 2,426 cryptocurrencies, you have 19,000 markets. <laughs> so, you know, Having an exchange is, is a uh, profitable thing. The Bitcoin dominance is still going up. You know, the volume is down on certain altcoins, on certain exchanges. There's a lot of things to check for when you're doing arbitrage. All right. Need a good strategy to grow it. Right. So even the bot, you know, uh, the, the good thing about the, the bot and the, and the strategy it's still the things that we're learning here. The the bot is only there to enhance, you know, what you know and when to turn it on, when to turn it off. The smart orders is 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 more important on a, a market that's going down. If we're in a market that's going down, then the smart order the smart order system becomes more important. When the market going up, the bot is great because the bot can make multiple trades all the you know all the time while it's up. But still, if the market is going to go down, you don't want the bot to be buying when it's down because we still don't know. No one knows, even the bot. No one knows how low the how low the market is going to go. So yeah, if you have very little time to manage, the, the the purpose of being in the group is so you'll have a you'll have the update on the market and you have the same strategy. So if we're saying that hey, you know what, we're not we're not turning, we're not in the market until you know the stock market closes or whatever. Then you'll turn the bot on. That's all you have to do is turn the bot on when we think the market is going up. When the market is going down, you know, and, and the market is at the high, you stop the buying on the bot. That's one strategy. You stop the buying on the bot when the market is hitting a high because the bot doesn't know how, you know, it, it still doesn't think, you know, it, it, I mean, we are still human and we, we know market psychology. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll see you later, uh, Amos. So, you know, that, that is one is that, you know, technology can, can, can be a gift. It also can be a curse because we depend on it too much. Then we're depending on someone else to make the decision. And a bot will do well. You know, it did well when the market was going up, you know, it got like 30, 40, 50%. And that's because it was trading and taking profits with no emotion and it was buying, buying, buying. It can buy 30, 40 times, but then the market goes down. It also can buy, and if you have stops, it will continue to buy. So the strategy with the bot is if you use a small amount, where this way, if it does buy on the way down, you can always add more in dollar cost average. You know, you can always buy more, but you don't want to put your entire account under the bot control. So we'll go over some of the settings. Uh, I'll probably create a video of saying that hey, here's a strategy with a with a smaller amount. 
So the thing is, if you have fifty thousand dollars, you're not gonna put the fifty thousand dollars and have to buy trade the entire fifty. You may put, you know, one third, one fourth. You may put ten, twelve thousand in the bot and have each trade be like two thousand or one thousand, and anticipate a smaller amount where maybe you're making one percent, two percent off the thousand dollars, and it does it five or five to ten times a day. You know, and then you you allow for ten trades. And this way, you're only trading ten thousand of fifty thousand. If you only have two grand, you may only want to trade a thousand, and then you have it, you know, two fifty a trade. And so now you have five trades to buy and make, and you know, most likely it's not going to go down to zero on two fifty. And if it does, you just lost two fifty. You know, it's better than going in at two thousand on one trade and losing, you know, down twenty percent, which is you know around 200 bucks. So this way to buy it actually, so actually helping deploy it. So if you uh, you guys want to send me a message, you might look, you know, I'm going to use a bot and here's how much I'm going to allocate or here's how much I have in my account. How much should I allocate to the bot? Because it should be an addition or you can allocate the whole thing, but then you're just like, all right, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm turning it on and off. Like here's, here's my responsibility. I'm going to be able to turn it on and off on different days. I'm gonna look through the mastermind report on the days that we see volume. I'm gonna stop the buy. On the days that it's supposed to be red, I'm gonna turn the bot on. So this way it buys when the when the market is low in volume, and then you're selling when the market, you know, anticipating a uh, a, a run in the market. So yesterday or two days ago, I told everyone I said, hey, stop the buy on the bot and just allow it to sell. <laughs> allow it to sell your positions. All right, and now if the market is down, then you like, all right, turn the bot on, allow it to buy things for you. So that is kind of the um, you know mentality you want to have with a any bot. Because if there's a bot out there that can make a hundred percent without you know people, it's like so you know the, the system, the tools work, but I think people don't have the right expectations. You know, <laughs> you know. So like uh, you know, I think we were talking yesterday, and it's like. Yeah, well, let's just skip that. But uh, yeah, you know, the, the 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 expectations of the tools is like, you know, we still control it. It's a tool. It's a help. You know, we're gonna use it on good days, and you'll probably make fifty percent. You know, some some days off the bot where you're actually working, but the market is going up. So you know, it, it'll be doing the trades for you. When the market going down, you know, we need to be able to log in, just read the read the you know, WhatsApp, read be in the group, you know, join these calls, so you have an idea where the market is at. You know, in this way, you can say, hey, I'm going to turn it off. I'm only going to have it uh, selling. All right, guys. So, um, hey, I'll be uh, around. You know, send me, you know, if you guys can send me the messages here, you know, send me the message. And, uh, and uh, I'll see you guys later. All right. All right see you.